Hi everyone. I'm glad I had an opportunity to pop in here for the uh, November full moon just to talk about what I'm seeing happening and how that might be affecting each and every one of you. Maybe, maybe not. But going forward, this I uh, feel like this is another event that will continue to, um, what I'm going to say is amplify the, um, the, the shadow aspect again, that's, that may be remaining in the, in the body and, um, calling to, to integrate the shadow again, you know, it's, it doesn't seem like it's enough to clear anymore but we have to also in, integrate the shadow into the rest of our being. So I know there's been a lot of shadow work as it is, um, but uh, this is going even deeper now, let's say, or perhaps um, even the shadow within nations. So in the United States, that would be the shadow uh, uh, the shadow aspect of the U.S. as a nation. And following our presidential elections, we can see that there is, there is more coming up. Um, people have taken a stand, is you know what it feels like, although some people may not interpret it that way. But um, the nation is more together than not, I would say, given the statistics uh, of what, how the election went and how many people and states actually um, leaned towards the Republican Party and um, Trump as the, the presidential, presidential uh, you know, winner now. So there's going to be more that we, we see, obviously, but I just wanted to show you um, an aspect uh, about the solar system and how that affects us at the, the heart level, the fourth chakra. So um, let me start here where uh, this is a transmission that we received on October 5th, 2025, and this uh, transmission is a, what I would just call a cosmic arthropod ray. So this is something that we've been ta talking about in our Patreon group. Um, and the transmission is uh, went through Giza is what I saw. And Sam was very agitated and because this was a very powerful sound transmission is what I heard is a, a very, very high pitched sound. And um, so this, these represent the, actually represents the Giza pyramids. And we see it as an octagon because, you know, it's my understanding that what we see on the surface looks like it has that pyramid shape, but the bottom one also uh, is like um, a mirror image of what we see on top. So, and uh, my understanding is that Giza is significant, but because it's the fourth dimensional stargate and um, it connects into the fourth dimensional ley lines. So what it looks like is there's been um, an artificial webbing. So arthropods are, you know, there's a lot of insects that are arthropods um, and Arthropod, the word itself means, uh, just means jointed legs. Um, so spiders are arthropods and um, scorpions are arthropods. There's arthropods in the ocean, like uh, lobsters. They have that kind of, uh, they have that kind of shape. They, you know, it's, they have a, a hard shell and up their skeleton is on the out outside and their symmetry because they have the same number of legs on one side as the other. And um, 
if you if you look at our uh, structure of our body and the um uh what did it well what do we call it the platform and the um gosh I don't know why am I losing my words already uh, uh, uh the scaffolding yeah that's what I'm looking for scaffolding of our bodies we also have this kind of uh, arthropod like structure right we have the uh, our bone structure um, rib cage you know on one side and then there's like a um, a balance on the other side although I don't know that we have the same number of ribs on each side but but you get the picture it's balanced we have two two arms and two hands two legs two feet and so this is the idea of this um, scaffolding our neurology is kind of uh, spider-like in a sense on each side and um, there's also webbing in our bodies meaning uh, like the uh, the fascia system is kind of webbed you know kind of moves all the way, all through different in different directions our meridian channels in a sense is kind of makes this web-like patterning uh, our, our neurology especially makes that kind of uh, web-like kind of patterning the uh, lymphatic system so that's what I mean when I say there, it, there's a scaffolding of of uh, an arthropod kind of structure and so um, there's been an unnatural inorganic let's say uh, webbing so we're getting really really down down into the very very subtle layers of uh, of who we are and at the very very subtle levels uh, there's been like a webbing and there's been an inorganic kind of web um, that was put into through Giza the Giza pyramids that was put into the fourth dimensional ley lines on the on the planet and what that did was it's like that deeper layer of separating our heart, right? 4D meaning fourth, fourth chakra. That's the fourth dimension. Um, so our heart, in a sense, because of this very, very subtle webbing, um, facilitated the separation of the heart from the lower three chakras. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, might think, oh, we cleared all that. We healed it. I'm, I'm really one. But um, again, what I'm saying is, as we are more is activating the planetary uh, density is changing, then now we can see the even more subtle, subtle um, distortions that was put into the planet. So um, this transmission was to... Be, uh, I don't know if it's completely dissolved, but it's dissolving because of this clean, uh, very clean, pristine arthropod, cosmic arthropod transmission that came from, you know, the heavens beyond uh, 18th dimension. And right now I'm going to be on 20th, 22nd dimension, you know, as, as a reference. Um, they're not really dimensions, but just just for a, a reference point. So it's beyond that which in these transmissions we we haven't been getting kind of these kind of transmissions before. But um, we're getting lots of these cosmic transmissions now in order to continue to free up matter. That means we can free ourselves from these uh, overlays. Um, so that happened and. Is going deeper, um, and then uh, last week or so, Sammy had me um, put this vector equilibrium. If you watch the last vlog, uh, then I was talking about the vector equilibrium, which in, in a the shape of a geometry represents zero point because all um, vectors lead to uh, they cancel each other out and so they lead to zero point so 
this is more of a you have to look at this more like a 3d image so this would be more like a, a, a horizontal plane like if you were imagine a sheet of paper that goes deep it's really more of a um, a 3d image even though you see a, a 2 d what looks like a 2d image which looks just like a hexagon but it's really meant to be a 3d uh, and this is something that Buck Mr. Fuller had discovered so it represents a zero point as a geometry. Now these other images, some of if you watch some of our other past um, vlogs, this is something that I had started in uh, 2022 and um, it was updated once more in um, July 2022 and uh, then I don't know, it's going through uh, a lot of different iterations. But the cubes mean um, the hypercube. So in, I think it was also in 2022, that Samantha had said in January that um, we have, we're in now uh, hyper, hypercube technology. So the hypercube or the tesseract is... Um, uh, it's just it's a hypercube meaning we're, we're hyper dimensional now so I would see that as the I don't know if you want to call it the addition or the new sixth harmonic universe 16 17 and 18th dimensions which actually um, kind of folds into uh, mother's dark matter the realms of mother's dark, dark matter and um, which goes deep into the quantum field now and um, it's you know, I'll just say it's the basis of of matter um, and subatomic particles so uh, this is what the hyper hypercube means so uh, with this vector equilibrium also known as the cuboctahedron uh, she had me put it around the sun and now with that last image right so uh, the clearing of that webbing in 4d ley lines it's now a enabling us to um, really connect to the heart the heart and the soul the fourth chakra the very base uh, of our of our hearts uh, heart and soul so um, it's what it felt like after I drew this is that it means then when we we were connected to the Sun via the solar plexus right so that's why they call it solar it's it's solar plexus but now with this um, reset and the freeing of our lower density body to really move up an octave, let's say, now uh, it feels like our heart will be um, connected, directly connected to the sun. So this means we're going from lunar matrix finally to solar matrix and lunar matrix meant that it was we were that's what was holding us in a 3d by wave bipolar um, consciousness very polarized uh, and so literally if you're feeling things going on in your diaphragm this could be uh, could be why pressure in the liver across the diaphragm uh, maybe in the pancreas uh, that whole area in the um, uh, uh, the kidneys you know that kind of sits just below the diaphragm in that area so this is um, a another major change to facilitate our freedom so this then also frees us from the lower 3D ego and 
uh, it's connecting to the, the lion heart that is humanity, right? So um, the heart now can really rule, you know, going forward. The other aspect that was, that's interesting about this is that as this sun is now shining there at the heart level, it's like a flashlight. So it's shining down, downward, into the lower pelvis, into the pelvic area, where uh, more shadows are going to be visible, more of our shadow aspects. And also in the 4D heart, since it's 4D, it's also the astral level. So shining a light on astral, uh, the astral body and whatever is there, attachments, you know, shad- astral shadows, astral entities, you know, all of that is going to be highlighted even, even more. So this, you know, it can be, this is a wonderful thing, but it can be a difficult thing. So we'll see more people fragmenting uh, because the solar plexus, which is um, electric, my understanding, uh, uh, it has a, um, it's connected to the mental mind of how our neurology works, those electrical signals that go through neurons. Think of it that way. So when it's now moved to the heart and the solar plexus is suddenly freed, then more is going to make it easier for more of our mental patterning, programming to be also seen, right? The flashlight that is flashing below and above. And in our, in our bodies, this is, uh, you know, the pelvic, lower pelvic area and also then upwards into our brain, our thoughts, um, more awareness, more self-awareness for those of us who can discern what, what's, what's happening, but other people may not know. And if they haven't done, been aware of any of, of the shadows, then, um, uh, you know, it, it could, it could be harder. So, Coming up here in the next few weeks, uh, as we go through the rest of the year, we're likely going to see uh, even a, a more a stronger effort to hold on to the old systems. So um, if you thought it was bad about the mudslinging that goes on you know, now, it could be even more amplified. Um, so just just an FYI, because um, wonderful things are happening, but we know that we have to witness a lot of these things taking place before we can see the light, um, so to speak. So um, the other thing that I've been seeing and also with another friend who uh, we kind of swap notes in a sense. Um, uh, uh, We've been seeing a Mother Arc 13th gate actually opening and where I'm seeing it now, right now, I'm not sure exactly where, but it looks like it's in Mozambique in uh, Africa. Uh, and there's been 12 mother art gates, as some of you listening might know, but it was almost like the 13th gate, the 13th, um, center point, uh, was more of a pillar, uh, into the 13th dimension that the, uh, that was kind of cohesively holding the other 12 gates. So there wasn't an actual 13th quote gate on the, on a location on the, on the planet. So net, but now it looks like there's one opening up in Mozambique and, um, 
And what that means is the physical presence of the mother, the cosmic mother, in a way that we haven't, I don't think, ever known on, on planet Earth, you know, at least in this 3D density, um, in, in this way. And so even what we thought of as the divine feminine, the feminine principle, is going to go through um, an awakening in us, what that means how that feels in our bodies, uh, you know, and again, I think it's hard to describe because we can only experience it first and then be able to talk about it. But the divine feminine, um, in my view, has also been off, and at least what we've been talking about in the last several years. What I've seen is more of this divine feminine as um, kind of this feminist, I mean, more aggressive kind of feminist, in a way, not in, in more of the dark way, you know, and I don't mean dark as in like dark mother, that's, that's uh, also can be good, but uh, in that more fallen feminine um, aspect that can show up because that's the, and it, an aggressive kind of feminine is still exerting a kind of masculine, uh, aggressive, masculine, fallen masculine kind of energy within that as well. So, um, you know, exerting force, we see women, you know, who are uh, doing lots of martial arts kind of things and moves. And not that that's bad. I'm not saying that that's, that it in itself is wrong, but in trying to exert feminine power, um, even that is kind of a, a, a perversion, um, if, if you don't mind me saying. So it's yet to be seen what this, act, what this actually is going to look like. But um, this, is, this is significant. This is um, really some major things happening. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, I really wanted to write a blog or record something and I just thought, you know, it's, in some ways it's easy to, easier to record it rather than try and type it out. Um, so, uh, and, and then with images, you know, it's always uh, hopefully helpful to all of you. Um, so our page, next Patreon meeting is coming up on November 19th. We meet at uh, 630 Pacific Standard Time now. Um, it's usually about one to it's usually about two hours now. We're really getting into about two hours. Um, there's time for some open discussion. That's usually not on YouTube. Private discussion before uh, the presentation portion starts. Um, we're going to be uh, the energy work. We're doing a lot with resetting the electric and the magnetic in the body because even what we've been operating on... Um, has not been, quote, I'll just say clean. The electric has been kind of very sharp. So it did a lot of damage to um, our neurological system. The, the dendrites get fried. Um, and it's not just for the autists. You know, it's, it's just stress in general that could fray the, uh, the ends of the dendrites is what, what I've seen. And we've been working a lot with um, primordial waters from the liquid universe, which is like the first creation. Um, you know, when this universe was, um, when the first life wave, as uh, someone calls it, um, emanated in, into uh, this universe for source to have an experience. And um, so uh, what I was shown a few years ago, many years ago, when I worked with... Um, a woman who did some activations with me is, uh, you know, the, the, uh, she called it the ecatic worlds are, uh, it's the liquid universe. And so that's the, the, uh, very, very beginning of our, uh, universe. So it's not liquid as in what we think of it here as in water. So we're working with these primordial waters, uh, from first 
creation, let's say, um, it's the only, um, and, and that doesn't feel adequate in a sense, but from our, from the, from the terms that we can describe it, that um, is uh, probably the closest. So it's not liquid as we know it, but it's something, it's like a pre-matter, pre ether even kind of um, spirit water. Uh, so we've been working a lot with that and really being shown that to heal the um, neuro- neurological system and to rewire the that liquid, the cerebral spinal fluid, uh, plays a very key role in that healing. And even the memory there's even memory because it's it's like like water that holds holds a memory. The um, uh, the liquid of our cerebral spinal fluid um, is also holding memory in there. So it's between the synapses, um, right between the the dendrites at the end of one neuron to the next. They fire. Uh, you know, it goes from electrical signal to a chemical signal uh, in the synapse and then it it, uh, continues with another electrical signal that goes through the next uh, neuron but um, you know I was talking with my friend Terry again this morning and um, we were seeing that the liquid there also holds memory uh, and, and patterning that we're trying to heal from. So this is some of the things that we're going to be uh, doing on the next Patreon meeting. So um, right now I've kept it at $22 per month. And um, if you do, for the Cosmic members to have access to all of uh, the videos and all the images that um, I share, uh, if you do want to join and try it for a month, please uh, don't use the Apple app, um, you know, that you download from the App Store because Apple is now taking 30% of, of, from creators for just using using their app. So you can do, you can log in um, to, to Patreon via a, a computer uh, or if you're on an Android, it doesn't, it doesn't affect um, the Android devices. So uh, we would appreciate that. Otherwise, um, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, we would appreciate that because I, I really don't want to give 30, 30% to Apple. I mean, you know, uh, anyway, uh, I mean, I appreciate the value of what they do, but at some point, you know, anyway, you all understand. Uh, so thank you for listening and hopefully, I hope this was helpful to you and, um, hang in there because like I said, there are really good things happening, but, um, it's more healing, integrating shadow, integrating, um, all aspects of being, uh, integrating astral bodies that may be yours, um, that may be part of you, uh, that got separated from a past life. So it's not necessarily all, uh, quote, attachments and entities, although it could be, uh, but I'm just saying. So um, hang in there, and we're, we're on a roll. Uh, we're on a roll. So thank you very much.